Welcome to Dad Tech, where we talk tech toys and gear for geek-centric dads. Today, I'm reviewing the Google Nest Audio smart device. Over the last few years, the market has been inundated with smart speakers, large and small, vying for space in your home, every room in your home to be exact. The trick is finding a device that hits that sweet spot that mixes the appropriate speaker size relative to the size of your room with enough oomph to deliver high quality audio when you need it. Google Nest's audio device is their attempt to satisfy that nice middle ground of size and acoustic prowess. Google thankfully abandoned the previous Google Home air freshener look and decided instead to imbue the Nest Audio with a similar design language as its siblings the Mini and the Max, which feature more rounded edges and cloth draping. The Nest Audio, however, is completely enrobed in cloth unlike the Mini or Max. The design aesthetic evokes a squared off Tic Tac or a contemporary throw pillow and can be purchased in different pastel hues, which Google has identified as chalk, charcoal, sand, sky, and sage. To me, it looks an awful lot like white, black, beige, blue, and green, but what do I know? I'm not a design consultant. I personally like this design as it evokes a bit of whimsy, especially for such a smart device, and the soft silhouette and inoffensive color palette blends in well with different home decor styles. The Nest Audio stands seven inches tall, five inches wide, and three inches deep. Be aware, however, that it must be stood up vertically and cannot be laid flat. There's only one marking on the unit, which is the Google logo on the rear. Other visual cues are the four LED status lights in the front and one seam that bisects the cloth that shrouds the entire unit. The DC power connection sits in the rear and thankfully so does an actual mute switch for the privacy conscious among us. Google notifies you when you turn on the mute that it has been deactivated. The top of the unit houses the haptic controls, although there are no markings to indicate that. You press the middle to play pause, you press the left section to lower the volume, and you press the right section to increase it. The LED lights on the front indicate the status of the device, whether you're muted, connecting via Bluetooth, using Google Assistant, them, and so on. There are also three far field microphones that await your commands and can be utilized for your phone calls via your mobile device or through your Google Duo account. The brain of the Nest Audio is a one tear ops learning chip made specifically to understand your routine, your content consumption habits, and preferences. I personally don't know if I should be happy about the convenience that brings or if I should be filled with Black Mirror style existential techno dread. Most of the setup interaction you'll have with the Nest Audio will be via the Google Home app. From there, you can initiate a first time setup, group other Nest Audios in separate rooms, which is really handy for its intercom function as a parent with young kids, as well as group two Nest Audios together to form a stereo pair. Now let's talk about the important part of smart speakers, which is what actually makes them smart to begin with. After owning several smart speaker iterations from both Google and Amazon, I can honestly say these speakers are indeed getting smarter. They're less prone to hearing you incorrectly, are more accurate in their contextual responses, and by and large, their feature set has grown to include some really useful functionality. Namely on the Nest Audio are its Media EQ and Ambient EQ technologies. Media EQ evaluates the content you're consuming and adapts the sound profile specific for that media type, such as a podcast or an audiobook, as well as tuning for specific genres such as hip hop or classical music. I was initially skeptical about these claims since it certainly sounds good in theory, but many times these never work out in practice as well as the marketing presents it. But to be honest, I was very pleasantly surprised. There is a marked difference in the clarity and tonality when you are listening to audiobooks. Between music genres, I did notice that the Nest Audio attempted to add a little bit more low frequency response for the bass heavy tracks, although I was personally underwhelmed by that response itself, given that there isn't much to speak of in terms of bass reproduction on the unit. But again, in practice, Media EQ did seem to be understanding the track and its musical requirements and adjusted it accordingly. Ambient EQ, on the other hand, bolsters the audio relative to the room you're in and its acoustical signature. Let's say, for example, you're listening to a podcast while vacuuming, the Ambient EQ will adjust for the din of your activity and increase the volume and clarity accordingly. Note that this only works for spoken word content such as audiobooks or podcasts. Again, in practice, this worked extremely well in my experience with the volume adjusting to the right level in relation to me vacuuming, using a blender, or having the fan on in the room. There is a big caveat, however, that you will need to have the microphone off mute for this functionality to be enabled, so be warned. All of this functionality is easily integratable, especially if you have a Chromecast, which makes casting from your mobile device or PC to the Nest Audio a total breeze. And with full support of most streaming content platforms such as Spotify and now even Apple Music, you have a full arsenal of content you can stream directly. All of that streaming is supported by Nest Audio's Wi-Fi, which supports both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands, as well as offline Bluetooth 5.0 connectivity, which will allow you to stream at high quality with very few hiccups. So how do all of these high quality streams ultimately sound on a Nest Audio? I can happily say it sounds quite good relative to its size. As a mono speaker and a single speaker 
configuration, the 19 millimeter tweeter and the 75 millimeter woofer does a praiseworthy job of creating clear, distinct audio. By employing a tweeter and a mid-bass woofer, it allows the Nest to relegate low through high frequencies to their respective drivers, resulting in better overall output resonance. Due to its size though, don't expect room rattling bass. The low frequencies are a bit subdued for my tastes, but they are passable for a single speaker solution. Harmonic separation is always important when playing music that has a lot going on simultaneously, and doing that well has been a bit of a hit or a miss in these smaller form factor speakers, but the Nest audio handles it fairly well. Even at the highest levels, there's basically no distortion to speak of. Ultimately, your purchase decision on smart home devices will be driven by your smart assistant of choice. If you are steeped in Google's ecosystem already, the Nest Audio is a good recommendation if you want something more musically robust than the Mini, but you don't need the horsepower or don't have the requisite space to accommodate something like the size of the backs. I like the design aesthetic of the Nest Audio as it allows the unit to be both unobtrusive, but impart a little bit of style to whichever room you situate it in. There are comparable, if not sonically better audio speakers such as the Sonos One SL if you don't need the smarts the Nest Audio brings to the table and check out my review here if you want those details. But for $100 and with everything it has in its tool bag, along with its ease of integration into Google's ecosystem, you can't go wrong with the Google Nest Audio. So check out my other reviews here and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content and I will check you later. Peace.